2012 Macy's Day Parade starring Austin Stylish Perry Logan and here we have the Killer Drone Float yes it's the Killer Drone Float coming to a neighborhood near you and here we have the Race Car Float for those of you who don't know when Republicans say the word welfare they're being racists we're celebrating the greatness of that idea this is the Obot Float and here's the Austerity Float which our neoliberal government seems determined to impose on us. And here we have the Gaza float. The Gaza float, I'm glad I don't live there. I'm thankful I don't live there. And here we have the I'm glad I'm not Bradley Manning float, which I believe by a remarkable coincidence is the name of this show. Thanksgiving. Uh, listen, listen. Does anyone know where Anonymous hangs? I'm thankful for a group called Anonymous. This is a real thing. We're taking time out from those groovy Perry Logan fantasies. Uh, to have a look at the grim rocks of reality, the, the gross splinters ready to cut your flesh. All right, we're, we're looking at grim reality. <laughs> what? All right, I've heard about reality, all right? I'm reporting it to you. I've heard about grim reality, and in that grim reality, there is a, an awesomely cool group of people called Anonymous. I won't give you any names. A real group, kind of like uh, computer activists, sometimes called activists. Uh, someone, uh, tell me where I can go to give Anonymous a big slobbery kiss. Hello, hello. 
too much mouth, too oral, probably too oral. But uh, if, I, if I could give Anonymous, and I don't care if Anonymous is fine or not, <laughs> a, a real group called Anonymous, to lay aside this shtick, this group Anonymous may have prevented Karl Rove from electronically flipping the Ohio vote in the 2012 election. If that doesn't knock you out, maybe this will. Oh boy, if that doesn't knock you out, maybe this will. Karl Rove is all in a tizzy. Karl Rove's panties are in a wad. And why? <laughs> this is Karl Rove. <laughs> I'm in a tizzy because a group called Anonymous prevented me from electronically flipping Ohio's votes in the 2012 presidential election. <laughs> now, can't even get a date. <laughs> this is Carol Rowe. I'll be back. I'll be back. Carl Rowe. He'll be back. Carl Rowe. He'll be back. <laughs> Even as we speak, Carl is no doubt plotting means of stealing the 2016 election. Oh, and we're so thankful. Well, uh, a real group called Anonymous, um, wise in the ways of computers and secret computer stuff, uh, taking note of the fact that Carl, Carl Rove and his folks, his, his operatives, truly and literally did flip the Ohio vote in 2004. Yeah. The story, and this is like, again, we're talking reality. The story is that the uh, Ohio voting system, the computer voting system in Ohio, crashed at 1114 in 2004. And what happened during, while it was rebooting was Karl Rove and his little operatives Visualize them as grotesque, mutated little rats scurrying, scurrying into the electronic wilderness and really and truly, woo, flipping the votes. They really flipped the votes. This is like, this has been published. This is like exists. It's like in this book, okay. I'm trying to reassure you that I'm talking about something real because this is so freaky, right? It does sound a little like something I would make up, but it's a, it's a real thing. Carl flipped the, flipped the election. He flipped it. He stole Ohio. It made all the difference. That's why we got the uh, draft dodger instead of the war hero. Long comes Anonymous uh, in 2012 when sure enough, here's what happened in the last election. The Ohio voting system, the computerized voting system in Ohio, crashed almost to the minute at the same time it crashed in 2004. Do you like that? I believe it crashed at 11.14 in 2004 and it crashed at 11.13 this year. It crashed. And then of course it came back up. But this time it hadn't been flipped for Romney, which was Carl's plan. I know it sounds like we're all hallucinating, but this is really what's going on. And the mainstream media really can't, their, their hands are tied, really. <laughs> they can't talk about it. All right, so, but the real deal is that uh, it looks like a group called Anonymous who are, as I say, kind of politically active, uh, political activist hackers, yeah! And I wanna give them a big sloppy kiss because you see, they electronically uh, caught this system. They found the system that Carl was using. It was apparently pretty easy if you're any good. You know, Winger's just not that good at pr computer programming, okay? Wingers are many things, but they are not computer programmers. No, no, they are not rocket scientists. They are not computer programmers. They are not atmospheric scientists. No, no, no. <laughs> Okay, he's gone, right? I don't know what happened to that guy. 
Anonymous uh, kind of hacked into Carl's thing and check it out, built a firewall. <laughs> Anonymous found Carl Rove's evil plot. And I know, it sounds like a movie, but Carl was plotting to flip Ohio. And Anonymous stopped him, to make a long story short. They built a firewall. <laughs> Anonymous built a firewall in Carl Rove's thing. Dead sticking it to him. Anonymous going like, kind of like, fricking them up their very center. <laughs> oh, hell. <laughs> Anonymous put in a firewall to keep the vote from being stolen. And they left it down while uh, Carl's Ro Carl Rove's minions of mutated little rats Ew. crawled around getting ready to flip Ohio. And they were gonna, they tried. Now, this whole story is astounding enough. It has a little personal note for me, a note of personal vindication because I, I, uh, I thought the Republicans might steal. I, I thought they would, okay? <laughs> mm. I thought they were going to steal the election. And you see, it turns out that even if they'd flipped Ohio, they would have lost. <laughs> there was that surge of voters that just made it impossible. But I was making all these predictions, you know. And this kind of like, backs up my little theory, okay? I consider that it backs up my little theory. And I say this with all thanks and humility. Oh my God, it's Thanksgiving, and for some reason, Perry's gone all humble on us. Perry's thankful that he's a vegetarian and doesn't have to eat turkey. Perry thinks pardoning the turkey is creepy, okay? Hey, yeah, I think pardoning a turkey who didn't do anything is creepy. I say this as a vegetarian. And Perry is thankful he doesn't think use of the word welfare is racist. I'm thankful I don't believe that uh, when a Republican says welfare, he's, he's being racist. <laughs> uh, just a moment here to say uh, hilarious Oh, I don't know, is it hilarious or is it sad that most of my fellow lefties, whom I thought to be intelligent people, think that when a Republican uses the word welfare or the phrase food stamps, he's being racist. I know what you're saying. You're saying, what up with that? Uh, lefties are convinced of this and I, they will not listen to me. They think that when Republicans use the word welfare <laughs> and food stamps, uh, they're being racists. Okay. I'm thankful I'm not that crazy. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. And now, Perry Logan and the I'm Glad I'm Not Bradley Manning Band play whatever! <laughs> Alright. Hey, fun's over. Okay, well, among other things, I'm thankful that Anonymous uh, kept Carl from stealing Ohio, even though it turns out it wouldn't have uh, changed the election anyway. <laughs> All right. But you got to keep in mind, thankful though we're being, Carl is sneaking off with his little mutated little political rats, with their mutated little political rat faces, like this. <laughs> Is off there uh, plotting how to steal the 2016 election. Are we gonna do something about this? Hello? I said, are we going to do anything about this? Have you guys fainted? Bob! 
Bob, the whole damned audience is fainting. What's going on? <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching another ineffable Perry Logan show from Austin's stylish and professional Perry Logan. This show emanates from November 22nd, 2012, Thanksgiving Day. And Perry realizes he's thankful for the ceasefire. Israel has stopped its murderous attack on Gaza, and we're all happy. No more killing sprees for you, Israel. I'm thankful I voted for Jill Stein. Turns out it feels good to vote for the progressive third party of your choice. Perry's thankful he doesn't live in a drone zone, i.e. one of the 70 known countries where Obama is killing people with drones willy-nilly. Perry's glad he didn't vote for a war criminal. Bad for your karma. Ouch. Bad. Bad for your karma. Ouch. Bad. Perry's thankful he knows a Democrat from a neocon. Perry's thankful for the hacker group Anonymous for preventing Karl Rove from flipping the votes in Ohio in the last election. It's true! Perry's thankful he doesn't believe with his deluded fellow lefties that using the word welfare is a sure sign of racism. That's about as dumb as it gets. Perry's thankful he doesn't eat turkey. Perry's thankful Andrew Breitbart is still dead, but most of all, Perry's thankful he's not Bradley Manning. my karma by voting for Obama. I'm glad I voted for Jill Stein, which is what you should have done. I'm glad I'm not an Obon sitting in a tree. I'm glad I don't think the word welfare is racist. But most of all, I'm glad I'm not Bradley Manning. I'm thankful for the ceasefire in Gaza. But let's get one thing straight. Israel was conducting a campaign of collective punishment. Don't give me that BS about Israel defending itself. Israel was not defending itself. Israel was conducting a cruel, vicious, predetermined, and politically motivated campaign of collective punishment against the captive people of Gaza whom they are systematically tormenting, all of which is a gross violation of international law. Thanks. I'm thankful I'm not an Obot sitting in a tree. I tell you what, I tell you what, I'm thankful I'm not an Obot sitting in a tree. Because, calm down, because first of all, I don't have to call everyone and his brother a racist every five minutes, and that's got to get to you after a while. Secondly, I don't have to bloody defend Obamacare. To put it another way, I don't have to defend bloody Obamacare, which is an, old, which is an idea from the, from the Heritage Foundation. It's an idea they stole from Mitt Romney, the right-wing guy Mitt Romney. It's the booby prize Obama gave us instead of single pair. The grim underpinning of this rockish show is something which is, well, uh, the opposite of funny. This is not unusual in satire or whatever it is I'm doing. But what's not funny is there's a real guy named Bradley Manning, a true hero, okay? Get this straight. That man should have a medal. But what's really happening, the man should have a medal, he's a whistleblower. And what's happening is the uh, government, under the uh, power of our good buddies, the Democrats, is going after him. They tortured him, okay? The whole case should be thrown out because they tortured him. They just kind of preemptively tortured him before he'd even been accused of anything. That, my friends, is the grim, no holds bar truth lying underneath this show. There is an atrocity going on. The man is on trial right now, and this is an atrocity. It should be thrown out because he was tortured by us. So hard to see my fellow lefties standing around with their fingers up their bums. Should you not be protesting, yes? You should be protesting, would. You not be protesting, were it Bush Cheney? Oh, 
or uh, an imaginary Romney as president. Come on, man. If Doug on the roof were doing it, you'd be all on the streets. And now you're standing there with your fingers up your bums, which is rude. The left, so many lefties have turned, have let party, have let partisan politics get between them and their own ethical sensibilities and they're letting Obama get away with this drone thing. Getting away with this drone thing? That's right, Obama. That's you, isn't it? Yes. As you well know, Perry, I've been turned into a chair. I feel for you. That serves you right. You got a damn kill list. Excuse me, Obama. We don't have kill lists. We don't go over lists of people who we think should be killed and then have them killed. I thought you were a bloody constitutional scholar. Was that all jive? I guess so. Or it doesn't apply. Yeah, well, you should read the Idiot's Guide to the Constitution, Obama. You have no such power. Get it through your little chair head. You have no such power. There is no such right. No president has the right to form a kill list. I thought you were smart. Yes, well, how smart can an empty chair be? Interesting thought, Obama. How smart can an empty chair be? This is Logar of the planet Logar. I'm not in this show, so on you go. What? Why are you glad you're not an obot sitting in a tree? Glad I'm not an obot sitting in a tree? He's glad he's not an obot a sitting in a tree! I'm glad I'm not an obot a sitting in a tree because I don't have to defend Obamacare. What the hell is Obamacare? Oh, it's the law of the land. The Democrats can't stop rubbing it in. It is the law of the land, but you know, there are bad laws. <laughs> Okay, in, in briefly put, Obamacare, and you know I love Obama, but Obamacare not so much. Obamacare is the booby prize Obama gave us instead of single-payer health insurance, also known as Medicare for All. Medicare for All! Sounds good! Ah, uh, but during the health care fight, you couldn't even talk about it. You couldn't even mention it. And what we wound up with, instead of single pair, was with not the, not the public option. Uh, no, no, no! Not even a little thing called the public option, which was kind of like... Yeah, <laughs> single pair light. But the insurance companies who were running this show would have none of it, okay? That's the long and the short of it. And if I were an Obot, a sitting in a tree! I'd have to defend that spit, you see? But mostly, I'm grateful I don't suffer from this terrible delusion, delusion that's going around on the left. My fellow lefties, heretofore thought of as being so very clever, I've got a delusion they think, and I'm not pulling your leg. If you look down, you'll see I'm not pulling your leg, even though it feels that way. But the left believe that when Republicans use the word welfare, it's racism. Okay, I, I've, I've, that's hyperbole, but they kind of believe that when Republicans say welfare, work, food stamps, or a few other terms, 
It's a secret racist code. I'm not kidding. Now here's the funny part. One of the funny parts. If a Democrat says welfare, it's okay. It's okay if a Democrat says welfare or food stamps. That's all right. But if a Republican says welfare, he's talking to racists in a secret code. This from my fellow lefties all over the Prague sphere, they all believe it. They cannot present a scrap of proof that Republicans communicate in a secret racist code. But my gosh, are they sure? And uh, here's how they know. You see, they know Republicans communicate in a secret racist code because they know Republicans are all racists. And they know Republicans are all racists because you see, they're communicating in a secret racist code. What could be wrong with that? I'm glad I got the right